Um, I feel honored to have the opportunity to speak with you this morning. And I really want to take a moment to thank Rabbi Kling Perkins for her support in arranging this time slot and for me to share some thoughts with you and for the amazing support of all, all the support staff at Temple of Muna for everything they do to keep things running smoothly. Uh, today, I want to touch upon three themes that are central to our identities as Jews. The power of story tied to which is the joy in reading and intergenerational connections. So please indulge me for Abel. I know we've done a lot of stand up sitting down for our prayers, um, but we're gonna do a short activity called stand up sit down that we do in schools. And I'm gonna ask everyone in the room who has felt the power a story can have over you, perhaps a book that changed your life shifted your thinking, opened you to new ways of seeing the world. All of you who have been touched deeply by a book or story, please stand up. And if you're not able to stand up, I'm sorry, you can also wave your arms. All right, take a look around you. Look how many of us have been touched by a story. This is great. Okay, have a seat. Okay, I've got another one for you. This one is for those of you who have had a person change your life through books or stories. And if you've had a teacher, a mentor, an inspiring person, it could be a parent, a rabbi, a neighbor, an older sibling, a significant person who has deeply impacted you by sharing a book or reading a story or sharing a poem or even giving you a book that changed your life in some way, please stand up or wave your arms if you're, if you're not able to stand. Great, have a seat, thank you. Okay, so I have one more. And this is if you know someone, a friend, a child in your life, a colleague, a neighbor, maybe even you yourself, someone you know who has struggled to learn to read. Please stand up, or if you're not able to, wave your arms. Okay, thank you. So in a few short moments, we've learned something about the people sitting around us. By looking around the room, we learn that many of us have been touched by stories. Stories have opened our worlds, changed our thinking, and offered us a place in the unimagined. The people who are praying with us this morning have also felt the power a story can hold to connect us in deep ways to members of our own communities. Teachers, families, neighbors, siblings, in significant ways. So too, many of us know people close to us who struggle to read. We ourselves, our friends, our children, our parents have had barriers in the literacy journey. The Jewish people often refer to themselves as the people of the book. Historically, the term comes from the Quran and it refers to people, Jews, Christians, Zoroastrians, and Sabians whose religions center around scripture. I never knew that historical origin of the term. That self-identification as the people of the book took deep roots in my own life. I grew up knowing that the Torah, Talmud, and other religious writings are central to our daily and weekly, weekly lives. I was taught to kiss the sea door if I dropped it. How could we not be the people of the book? Each year of my life, I am reminded how the dreidel was used as a subterfuge for teaching Torah. We would risk our own lives to share from that central book of our people. Books are deeply tied to our identities as Jews, so too the power of the stories within them. Think for a moment about the Parsha this morning, Shemot. In Shemot, we begin to tell the story of our people's exodus from Egypt. We learn about a new Pharaoh who didn't remember Joseph and his deeds. We learn about Moshe's early life, God's revelation to Moshe, and his return to Egypt. This is just the beginning. The Exodus story is spread out over not only the book of Shemot, or Exodus, but also over the next three books of the Torah. It is even referred to in our daily prayers. Pesach as well, one of our three major pilgrimage holidays, centers around the story we tell this morning. We come back to this story over and over because it is a central narrative of who we are as a people and of our people's relationship to God. 
We come back to it year after year, retelling, finding new meanings, finding ways to make the story exciting and meaningful for the next generation. This coming back to the story over and over speaks to me so much about the power a story can hold in both one person's life and the identity of a people. I remember at some point in my young life learning about a beautiful Jewish ritual that speaks to me about the joy of learning to read. At the age of three, and this may have happened to some of you in the room, at the age of three, when it's time to cut hair and start learning Torah, young Orthodox boys traditionally would be brought to the synagogue for their first lessons in learning to read Hebrew. The teacher would write each of the letters of the Aleph Bet backwards and forwards on a personal chalkboard. And the teacher would recite each letter and each child would repeat it. Then the teacher would put a little bit of honey on each letter and the child would lick the letter with their tongue to taste the sweetness. I love this ritual because it tells me that my people tie learning to reading, to learning to read with sweetness, with joy. And as someone who has had no trouble learning to read and for whom books have always been a refuge, a joy, an adventure, an exciting opening to ideas and knowledge, I have tasted that sweetness all of my life. Not all of us, though, have an easy time with learning to read. Many children do not feel like I do. For them, barriers exist in their literacy journey, economic, intellectual, educational, and let's not forget worldwide pandemics. A few years back, I posted a notice on Amuna Talks that I was looking for volunteers to read once a week for an hour with students in the school where I joyfully serve as a school librarian. And um, so it's called the Thomas R. Plumpton Student School, as Rabbi Kling Perkins mentioned. And it's a K-5 Title I school, which means 52% of our students are considered low income and eligible for free lunch and reduced lunch. Through that post, Rabbi Kling Perkins suggested I reach out to the Jewish Community Relations Council of Greater Boston. Um, they have a Jewish Coalition for Literacy um, that has a wonderful program that connects volunteers and teams to schools in the area. And they train one adult from a synagogue to serve as a liaison to the team of volunteers in that shul, and they can work at a particular school. GBJCL offers training sessions throughout the year for the volunteers and ways for the volunteers to connect to one another. Through this partnership, I've been able to bring approximately 10 adults to over 26 students in the past two years. And this has proven to meet such an incredible need in our community, both for the students who need the extra attention and the one-on-one -on -one time with an adult, and for the adults who are looking for meaningful opportunity to forge new connections, share their passion for stories, and be a part of a network of supporting struggling readers. And I'm going to have Fern Kaplan, our the, she's the volunteer liaison for Beth L. Temple Center, and she's a dedicated book buddy at the Plimpton School. Come on up here, and she's gonna tell you a little bit about her experience of volunteering and how it's impacted her. Hello, thank you for being so welcome to me. This is the first time I've actually been here. Um, I am a member of Bethel Temple Center in Belmont. So I felt so honored when Liza asked me to join her today and speak about my life experiences as a literacy tutor volunteer, also referred to as a book buddy. Liza asked me to share a few tutoring experiences and stories that have stood out in my mind over the past few years. <clears throat> Before I do so, Excuse me, <clears throat> I will take a step back and tell you that I started literacy tutoring four years ago, a short time after I became a member of Bethel Temple Center in Belmont. Although I have an undergraduate and graduate degree in education, I've spent nearly 50 plus years in advertising and marketing, not being a teacher. <laughs> the literacy tutors consisted of a small group of about four active temple members. We tutored at the to Tobin Montessori School in Cambridge before COVID shut everything down in 2020. When things opened up a bit, the Tobin School shut down, was torn down, and our team of volunteers became homeless. We had a group of volunteers, but no partner school that met the criteria for our tutoring help. 
About the same time, I was asked to be the team leader with the growing list of volunteers from Belmont, Arlington, Waltham, Cambridge, and Brookline. I had suggested checking into the Waltham Public Schools at about the same time that Rebecca Shimshak, who is the director of the Greater Boston Jewish Coalition for Literacy, heard from Rabbi Kling Perkins that there was a Temple Amuna member, Liza Haley, the library teacher at the Plimpton School, who needed some volunteers to help. And we became a match. It was Bashir, meant to be. We were looking for each other. And I was driving through Waltham one day and I said, what a perfect opportunity. And then all of a sudden, there it was. Our mission as book buddies is not only to have the children improve their reading and comprehension skills, a few of our tasks are relationship building, improving communication skills, and instilling the joy in reading and the empowerment that comes from reading. I usually start by telling the children that when you learn to read and enjoy reading and comprehend what you're reading, you can do nearly anything in your life. Liza said to me, Fern, talk about your aha moment when you realize that one-on-one -on -one reading with a young child was what you were meant to do. That was hard for me to do as I pretty much have one of these moments each week when I enter the school to tutor with the children. I could say that the best moments are just spending quality time with each child and having a signed conversation and digressing while we're reading a book. This happened last week with one of my students, I'll call her Kay. We were reading a book about a little boy who had mistakenly dressed up in an odd outfit and had his hair dyed orange and blue. He had been told by a friend that it was dress up day, but it was actually class picture day. There was a mention in the book of the 60s and 70s. I asked Kay if she knew what this meant and she did not. I made a very good attempt at describing the 1960s and the 1970s and what a hippie was and what kind of attire these hippies wore, what kind of music these hippies listened to and how they spoke, what flower power far out and groovy meant back then. Liz and I decided that our task was to find a book or write up about hippies. I did so, of course, on Amazon and planned to bring it with me next Tuesday to share with the little girl. One of the best, very best moments was at the end of the school year last year when I'm saying goodbye to one of my stu two students before the summer break. This second grade little girl, I call her a little girl, but she towered over me, who was, a, I thought, very shy and quiet, leaned into me and gave me a huge hug. She said she had felt seen, and I shared her same feeling. Each week, I walk out the front door, leave the Plimpton School building, and say to myself, or sometimes out loud, I realize I'm, I'm, I'm saying it aloud, I had just had the best day, and I hope that my students did also. In addition to the great training process, all of this is made possible due to Liz's care, compassion for the children, and her passion for and pride in what she does each and every day. And I really mean that sincerely. By the way, I'm sure I'll have another aha moment when I tutor next week. <laughs> um, it really is a pleasure and it's a joy and I just love working with you. So Fern and I would like to invite you all during Kiddish to come and talk with us at our table. And we have two other wonderful book buddies who've joined us this morning. And we can share more about the experiences of being book buddy volunteers or just books that have transformed you and changed your life or people who have shared books with you. We'd love to share. And um, we're going to be there for the finish. So thank you all so much. Thank you. Shabbat shalom.